The Atlanta homestand weekend has come to a close, and with it, the regular season matches of the Overwatch League's third stage. Whilst there were some great moments of entertainment, and the crowd came out in fantastic support, a lot of these series were a little one-sided, with only a couple holding any major playoff implications. That said, let's get straight into this weekend's action, as I discuss what happened, and take a look at how my predictions fed. Although, just to let you know, I'm planning to upload my power rankings and stage 3 playoff preview video over the next couple of days. It probably makes sense to first quickly discuss the extra events that we got to enjoy throughout the weekend, with Bren's Widowmaker 1v1 against Baby Bay and the return of Defran to the stage as he faced off against a new Overwatch League arrival to Toronto of Mangachu in a heavily anticipated Torbjorn Hammer only 1v1. On Saturday, Baby Bay comfortably made his way onto the stage, stepping into the last minute to destroy Bren in a Widow 1v1, with his original opponent Defran now involved in more pressing matters. Golden Boy was with him on stage and had the uncomfortable fortune that was everyone in attendance and watching on stream to see the arrival of the Brito Maker, topless aside from a jacket stolen from Bane and in tight Widowmaker spandex tights. He sauntered onto the stage with genuine confidence and once the pair were in game, he looked to make his mark early, taking the first two rounds, albeit with Baby Bay taking the mickey and just trying to troll him early on. In the third round though, when both parties were now taking it seriously, there was a sketchy moment where the Brito Maker managed to land a headshot, just not at enough power to give him the 3-0 lead. This would prove costly, as Baby Bay never looked back and found his group. When in close quarter combat, the Brito Maker looked his strongest and did pick up a further two maps in the bout. But once any distance was added, Baby Bay found himself in control and dominated, taking a convincing 7-4 victory to save us from the godforsaken world where Bren's ego would have ruled had he won. But it wouldn't surprise me if we see him back again in the future. By comparison, Defran's duel against Mangachu on Sunday was a much tighter and hotly contested affair as the pair slowly gained the support of their respective teammates from the Atlanta Reign and tried to find behind them as the contest progressed. To begin with, the rounds went largely back and forth, but two things became quickly apparent. The first being that the crowd was firmly on Defran's side, and the second being the obvious tactics and strategies being employed by either player. Mangachu tended to use his Molten Core early, of a smoother control of his hammer, which looked to get the first hit and take the initiative. Defran, meanwhile, was his normal quirky and skillful self, often relying on amazing jukes and dodges to turn the tables on Mangachu and take the rounds for himself. The scores were tied at 4 all in this first to seven affair, but at this point, Owl's new arrival started to gain some momentum, taking two back-to-back -back rounds, putting him on match point and Defran in the corner. He did manage to salvage another round, but this hill would be one too steep to climb as Mangachu pounced on a superior health advantage to lock up his 7th kill and confirm his victory in this entertaining duel which concluded with the pair exchanging a hug of a respect with another name now added to his list. I've spoken fondly of these events and given them some deal of time to talk about as without them this homestand and weekend in Atlanta and conclusion to stage 3 might have been spoiled and seen as disappointing if you just paid attention to the matches on Sunday. Saturday was better and kicked off with the New York Excelsior continuing their charge towards a 7-0 stage by comfortably brushing aside the Florida Mayhem 3-0. And whilst the score does look bad, Florida did put up a fight at some moments, picking up a draw as a sign of their continued progress and improvement at this stage. But still, the Excelsior looked dominant in this transitioning meta as one of the first teams to adopt it, picking up wins as a result, even they haven't always looked brilliant in them. Washington then started off their own match brilliantly, taking control of us an early lead against Philly. But from here on, the fusion grew into the series and quickly took control unsurprisingly taking the rest of the maps to win 3-1 and keep them still in the playoff chase by the slimmest of margins. Atlanta then took to the stage in front of a great turnout from their home fans at the arena and put on an entertaining series against a significantly improved Toronto Defiant, with their DPS, Mangachu, but particularly Mr. Logics, playing well again to make them competitive, even if the tank and support issues persist. Whilst Atlanta picked up the important win 3-1 to ensure they wouldn't remain winless for the stage, a major talking point came on Volskai, where the Defiant ran the Clockwork Vendetta composition and dominated the map, perhaps suggesting that teams want to try running it moving forward. The day concluded with a fantastic series between the Guangzhou Charge and Shanghai Dragons, with the Charge finally showing off the ability and potential they have, with Happy having a standout and outstanding performance on Widow, as he dominated the duels against Diem, who looked unusually off the pace alongside the rest of the Dragons, as they were handily dealt a 3-1 loss, with the main heavyweight brawl coming on Horizon, where Granger edged out the win 6-5 in rounds in an attack-favoured contest. But with the loss, the Dragons were dragged into a win and in situation in their match against Philadelphia that would raise the curtain on Sunday and decide the final member of the Stage 3 playoffs. 
And speaking of that match, it interestingly ebbed back and forth, with both teams gaining the upper hand on one another. Shanghai struck first after a clutch end to Ilios, but despite having an ultimate disadvantage going into the final fight, they got an early pick on Boombox before Envy made a huge play by eating Carpe's grab to turn the tables and win Shanghai in the map. The following two maps on Volskaya and Hollywood were also very tight affairs and were split evenly between the two sides, giving the Dragons a 2-1 lead going into Dorado. Throughout the series, obviously the most discussed topic was the battle of the DPS players and friends, Carpe and Diem, with the pair exchanging a Widow Jewel on Volskaya. Interestingly, whilst I thought Carpe ended up killing Diem more often, his kills often felt forced with less impact, with Carpe sometimes dragging himself out of position on Zarya as if he was trying too hard and making it too personal, whilst Diem was more calculated, winning the Widow Jewel and having a large impact on the whole. The last map, however, saw Philly and their playoff hopes fade quickly as they were picked apart and firmly halted on their attack as the Dragons secured the 3-1 win and thus the Stage 3 playoff ticket. Sunday's other games were by comparison not great with three consecutive 4-0 blowouts handed out by Guangzhou, Atlanta and New York who confirmed the 7-0 stage to Washington, Florida and conversely Toronto who completed their 0-7 stage respectively in one-sided affairs with one of the few things I'd note again being that Toronto dominated on Havana defense when running the clockwork vendetta comp and despite their attack failing, it's a strategy that could catch some top teams out if used effectively in the stage 3 playoffs. Finishing up with my predictions, I had gone into this final week of stage 3 matches with a record of 46 and 16, which I added to with a successful 7 on 1 effort at the Atlanta homestand, taking my stage 3 prediction record to 53 and 17, which is just a little worse than last stage where I'd gone 57 and 30, probably owing to a larger number of recent upsets that occurred this stage. And when combined with my overall predictions up to now, I'm at a respectable 155 to 55, meaning I get roughly three quarters of the matches I'm predicting right. Returning the focus back to this week, my only slip up came in the great performance from the Guangzhou chart as they upset the informed Shanghai Dragons, whereas most other results tended to go along the lines of my expectations, with a difference in a map and in most of them, with Philly's victory over Washington the only perfect result, although moving into the fourth and final stage of the Overwatch League's second season. I'm hoping to do just a little better and avoid results like the one I had a couple of the weeks ago. And with that, we reach the end of my stage 3, week 5 review and I'd like to thank you for watching. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'll hopefully be back tomorrow with my updated rankings before posting my stage 3 playoff preview and predictions. So if you enjoyed and don't want to miss out, please like, subscribe and follow me on Twitter as continuing Overwatch League coverage and content. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.